This is the Normal Nerds Podcast, where two very normal dudes talk about very nerdy stuff, and whatever else we feel like talking about. I'm your host, Davis Bates. And I'm Cody. Happy to be here again. Yes, our special guest is back in town almost a year since last time. Today is our Warhammer episode, Um, so sit back, relax, and welcome to the Normal Nerds Podcast. All right, Cody. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm well. I'm, I'm happy to be here and excited about the topic. Yeah, I'm pumped for it. Uh, Warhammer has gotten gigantic in the last, like, I feel like it's really blown up in the last couple of years. Um, at least for me, I've started, ever since Henry, like, I remember when Henry Cavill did the, his famous interview where he mm-hmm. talked about how Warhammer was his game and blah, 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 and Henry Cavill's like, you know, the nerd of nerds. Yeah. Um, that's when everyone started like slowly like it started trickling into my feet a lot more and then I started getting into the books and everything mm-hmm. and now I'm just like I see Warhammer everywhere which is great for me I think it's fun it's such an interesting story oh it's the universe is crazy like I remember I think I, I was in middle school back in like the oh wow yeah this dated me back yeah, in like old. the early 2000s I yeah, think so it was like 2000 old. 2001 and getting like the uh before it was Games Workshop, it was called Citadel. And so they, I'd get these Citadel miniatures, like little huh. online ordering catalogs. Okay. The characters just drove me crazy. Like, I, I I literally looked through these online catalogs until, like, the staples would fall out of, like, the Really? Pages. Yeah, I, I was obsessed with them. So, wait, you were into Warhammer in middle school? Yeah. Whoa, dude. So, you've been with it for a while. When did you when did you start buying minis for it and stuff? Oh, my God. Uh, I think I got my first miniatures in, like, sixth grade. I got, like, they used to have these, like, learn to paint boxes. Yeah. Where you could get, like, I want to say it was, like, nine of their yeah. original paints. And then you'd get, like, six Space Marines or, like, six Bretonian Archers. And I didn't know anything about mm-hmm. anything. Out of be, you're supposed to, like, like right now, like, if I'm going to paint, I do the base code. I get stuff so the paint can and I make sure it's in the right when I base yeah. code. and. Um, I do all these things like that, and I thin my paint so I can pick out the details. Yeah. I was just going raw in these miniatures. I was like, oh, if the paint's not showing up, I just need it thicker. <laughs> oh, my God. And uh, I was literally and like... two pounds of the miniature. Yeah, like I, there's these memes of like the one thick coat meme of just like faces. If you look it up, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, that was me as a child. Really? And I still loved them. That's So hilarious. much. Oh, God. Yeah. Did your parents know? So your parents got you the miniatures, I imagine, right? In middle school, sixth grade. No, no, I uh, I purchased them. My parents didn't believe in uh, buying things in terms of for us. Okay. It, it sounds bad. Like, yeah, okay. But my my parents are business owners, and yeah. so they're like, if you want money, we're not going to just buy things for you. Ah, uh, we'll you got to work for it. You work for it. Okay. We'll give you money, and then you save if you want something bigger, or, or if you want to be a degenerate, just spend it as soon as you get it. Um, that's bad. Okay. I imagine. <laughs> Were you the latter of the two? No, no, I was actually pretty good. And my brother and I learned that if we pooled our money, we could get bigger items faster oh, than we both nice, wanted. Nice. It was uh, pretty great. But yeah, like I loved, uh, and I know we're getting off some of the topic here, but the sculpts from like back then had so much personality because they're all hand sculpted and like you could see a little bit of personality of each sculptor into each uh, of their miniatures, especially like the orc ranges. Okay. Were fantastic. <laughs> they're ridiculous. Like there is like I remember I think there was like a goblin miniature where it was like two goblins doing like a piggyback ride because another goblin lost a leg. Oh but my they're God. still going for it. And I was like, this is awesome. That is awesome. As well, sixth grade's a little. <laughs> the Warhammer story is insane and pretty dark. I'm like, eh, sixth grade. That's a little young to be getting into all this destruction and uh, anything. Like anything to do with just with the Emperor's children at this point. Like I'd be like, oh, oh that was over my head. Right over your head. Okay, good. I good. was just like toys, miniatures. I'm painting. Fair I'm enough. Pushing Fair them enough. together. <laughs> Fight, smash, 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 smash. Oh yeah, boys. Uh, I didn't even know how the game worked. Um, it was basically the same as like. I still know Pokemon anyways. trading card games. Okay. I don't think anybody knew how to play the Pokemon trading card game, no. but we collected the cards. Yeah. And like, you just like threw them out there. It's like, yeah, hey, that's Pikachu. what it does. I don't know. I yeah, beat um, you in the show. <laughs> like, so yeah, no, I, I still know how the Warhammer game works. Have you ever played a full thing of Warhammer? I was introduced to a combat patrol, uh, which is kind of like the smallest version you can kind of get. Okay. Um, but at this time in my life, I'm so busy all the time. I play mostly kill team. Okay. Which are smaller crews of like maybe eight to twelve miniatures, 
I'm liking that more from a hobby point of view because I don't feel like I'm just running assembly lines. I can actually personalize miniatures. So like I um, kind of changing a little bit. I will take arms off and I'll put gotcha. other arms on and I, I make them more personalized yeah. for me. And I, I like having the time to do that and then putting out something. I'm like, yeah, these are my guys. Like I, I'm going to go into this a little too much. <laughs> uh, so like I have a current kill team mm-hmm. game going with my brother. And so we're using the same factions and i named my miniatures in there and so like as they're doing it i'd be like oh no uh decima 112 he just fucking took a shot in the head and then at the end of the game you go roll to see if they die okay and so like it, and they die they're out of the game yeah right? i'm yeah. investing in these guys because it's like three missions in my boy decima was trying to secure a strategic point and he took a fucking towel rifle to the face <laughs> and he's down and so like the end i'm rolling like to see if and so i'm investing these and I got to the point where, like, after the games, I used to do a write-up. So I, like, okay, what mistakes did I make? How can I play my team mm-hmm. better? And that eventually evolved into me just writing a narrative. And so, like, I have a personal story, which I don't share with anybody. Because <laughs> you're, like, the only it's person like, now and whoever fiction. watches it, yeah. I guess, uh, knows, like, I got a story of how my um, Adeptus Mechanicus are lost on this world. And they're just trying to fight off the Tau in Thousand Suns. And... It, each game is like a different part of that story. That's sick. I worked it in, and it's it's fun for me, and I, I like that more than like the bigger games. Yeah, makes sense. I, I find myself more invested as opposed to like, oh, okay, like thirty soldiers just died because of I don't know. Like I went up against oh, what the hell? Now I can't remember his name, but uh, like uh, the guy the guy that's in charge of the death guard i can't why can't they get well, I don't, yeah we, the death guard uh is it is more uh mortarian mortarian yeah. his model gorgeous i believe it yeah oh my god is it it's, it's easy in his chaos form then right yeah it's, oh, and but like, i hate nurgle he's so gross yeah but have you seen the nurglings i have seen the nurglings yes they're amazing <laughs> like sassy nurgling just takes the world by storm and i think that's one of the things like if we're gonna go kind of tie it back into like how this these things that kind of exploded. Yeah. I think Games Workshop kind of cracked a code, whether purposely or accidentally, of how to get people excited by mixing. Like, we got these really cool stories. These, mm-hmm. like, Grimdark. Like, Grimdark because is just a word because of Games Workshop. We have our Grimdark stories, these really awesome characters. And then every so often, we kind of add something funny. Yeah. Or add something that's, like, we got some humor in here. And, like, that's the sassy nerdling. Like, okay, that's I'll, fun. Or, like... The orcs ago. kill me for a The orcs are great. Yeah. Um, there was a box that they released that was just like some really cool like sea elves, but there was just a fucking crab in there, <laughs> and people didn't care about the rest, and they're just buying the box to so get the crab. Crab power. Oh yeah, and I saw like entire kill like little not. It's like they're called uh, the underworlds teams, but they just okay. got rid of everybody else and just had crabs that they then put weapons in the crab claws. So <laughs> each role. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those things I, I enjoy. Um, yeah. about games workshop is they have such serious um great gripping story in t- in there they do but yeah. then when we look at back at stuff we're like orcs are pretty fucking funny orcs are <laughs> the green skins are pretty fun yeah, yeah. i was yeah i think i talked about last night about the story the, the story in the horus heresy when horus is going over how they fought the orcs for like one of the first times and the orcs wanted to do some ceremonial combat in these arenas mm-hmm. so they all gathered their armies down there for one-on-one combat and then just the Astartes just bond him from orbit. It's like he's those morons. Yeah, like I love that. I thought that and like that's that's one of the parts of Warhammer that I really enjoy is that like I think obviously because I don't play the game, the overall story of it all. Like yeah. there are so many books I've watched hour hours long videos on the overall lore of it all, and it's insane. Like just the whatever ten thousand years before we get to forty k, the Horus Heresy is currently is just it's insane. Like I'm only. Whatever, because the way they structure the books is insane. Like it's all, it's a spider tr- it's mm-hmm. a it's a spider web of how to read it properly, and it's all over the place. But um, I'm only like I'm still in the early days of the Horus Heresy, and this is already a very gripping story to read and all this stuff. And then I just know as it goes on, it gets even more insane until you get to the Siege of Terror, which I want to get to so mm. badly. I've like I've looked up guides, but like, are there books you can skip to get there? The answer is yes, but. I don't know how, how many. I don't know what I'll do with that. There's a few that I really. There's a few factions I really want to read about first. Like right. once I get all the base factions done, which is because that's how they structured the. After you get past the flight of the Eisenstein, which is, uh, I think they're like with the last Emperor's children getting to Earth and mm-hmm. telling, and telling uh, 
Malkador the Sigilite about the Horus Heresy and everything. Uh, then then it's it's spider it goes into like this spider web tree thing of like each faction and like how like each faction has like five books or so and a couple of just outliers right. and that's how like you can read it all in order as it came out chronologically and it all still makes sense or you can read it this way and it'll still it'll make the most direct sense and all that stuff so mm. but at the end of all that becomes the siege of Terra and that's what I want to get to because it's all building towards that I one of the things I love about the Civil War. Mm-hmm. And just the whole thing is how they really pitted like the brother versus brother. And I, I feel yeah. like, so I'm going to kind of go off topic for mm-hmm. a second. So that's what we do on this podcast. All right. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so there is another uh, universe that I really enjoy. And that's the Battletech universe. Okay. And so Battletech also future. It sucks. <laughs> um, but a lot of those writers are like more. Um, historical writers and so there's a lot of like his historical influence in that writing okay and so i realized that like that's stuff i kind of like i'm like yeah that makes sense like revolutions uh usurping things like that and when i see some of those common human themes in the stories of warhammer i find that to be the most gripping yeah so like the idea of like the emperor's children it wasn't a monolith fulgrim didn't go like you know wild and be like you know let, let's be a degen yeah. and everyone's like yeah that sounds great there were a lot of people like no no we don't want to do that and that split those kind of splits and that's human to me yeah you can't a, a family a house can be divided on things yeah. and that i love especially like we were talking the other day about uh ray Lador. yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. what a story I know. um too bad with too bad with the emperor's children though like when you know when fulgrim like you know the dissenters on his ship when that when slanesh took over was like ah you don't agree with us? Death. Yep. It is like, there's a one scene. Fulgrim's so far was my favorite book that I've read on that. Because um, it's, it's all about the downfall of the Emperor's children, which were like, these are the people that everyone liked. And now they're the grossest fucks on the planet. Like, even, I've seen so many memes about them. Because um, I I think I hate Slanesh the most, actually, out of all the Chaos Gods. Like, because she's just, it, it thing is Boy, just, space uh, it's, on that so, one. it's such a, what? So you blame the space elves on yeah, that one. Yeah, the space elves, because they were the biggest degens on the planet. So yeah. much so, they just burned the chaos god out of their thoughts. It's like, you guys really screwed this one up. You guys were Screw bad. The yeah. And then, yeah, and just created created a freaking void into the warp. Um, uh, the, yeah, I don't remember what I was talking about. But I remember, oh yeah, I saw, I've seen so many memes of like, like there's all the traitor chaos marine primarchs and like their legions all that stuff and they're all like bah, 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 we're bad and evil and then there's like the emperor's children that come around and they're just like stay away from us yep. you're too weird Nobody for us even we don't likes like you. you no one likes them no. they're weird they put they like cut their faces and all this stuff I'm trying to remember I really don't even think like the night lords like them and like <laughs> the night lords arguably like I don't think a lot of people like to hang out with either yeah fair, I mean, true um, yeah but then again I don't think the night lords overall fell to chaos mm, they're no they're okay i think for the trying, i can't remember well, it's nine versus nine right in terms of primarchs that stayed well i mean the night lords they're on so, like they're not oh with humanity okay. but i don't think they so like they're not all the traitor legions embraced chaos like the chaos okay. gifts oh i didn't know that yeah oh, that's cool that's neat yeah yeah some were just assholes yeah some were just assholes and like some of it was just like, yeah, we don't really agree with the direction these things are going. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I, I, to the point where I want to, I, I feel terrible about this, but I can't remember the, the Primarch or the Night Lords. And this is terrible. Con, is it Khan? No, no, no. So the Khan is, uh, Con, he's the yeah. White Scars. Ah, okay. 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 Um, who, I mean, motorcycle, Mongols, like, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah pretty much, on, that's pretty much what I'm on board right? with that. Yeah, it's sick. Uh, as long as you're not the role leaders or the Emperor's children, I'm yeah, fine with you. The Primarch, like, uh, assassin showed up and, like, he could have bodied the assassin, but he's like, yep. <laughs> We're good. You're fine. Yeah, like, I did what I did. Yeah. I accept the punishment. I just saw a video on that. I don't remember his name, but they took his head, right? And then, like, a bunch of legion, a bunch of, like, factions went after his head rep for that or something like that. Uh, his crown or some shit like that. I don't know. I literally, on YouTube, so or my my social media, the way I consume all these reels is I go through Instagram. I don't really use TikTok other than when I'm posting stuff. Mm-hmm. And then YouTube shorts, which when I'm, mm-hmm. when I'm just bored, I'll go through there. But right now, because it, my YouTube shorts are so specific, they're all Warhammer stuff. And so it'll just, I'll just have endless reels of people just explaining random stories from the lore. And it's the coolest thing ever. Um, yeah, no, I I think it's, it, it's just, it's crazy some of the stories. Uh Oh, I don't want to ask. What's your take on uh, 
<laughs> what was it? what's his name? God, uh, Magnus is the Primarch of the Thousand, Thousand Sons. Sons. Yeah. Okay. So in the Hor- he in the Horus Heresy, he's kind of the reason that uh, whatever that the Emperor has to stay on the throne. You know that whole storyline. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He, do you he, think he did anything wrong there? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, there's, there's a debate lot of, on the internet. There's a lot of apologists, it. Magnus apologists out there. <laughs> there um, is. <laughs> Magnus did nothing wrong. He did. Like, yeah. He okay. Yeah, he wants to warn the emperor. Mm-hmm. I get it. I get it. He, in his mind, he was doing the right thing. However, in a leadership position, yeah, you can't just be ruled by emotion. His emotion was correct. That's the correct emotion to have, but. Logically, that didn't make sense. Like, yeah, the emperor was putting together this huge webway project. He was mm. about to put everything together, and you just like Kool Aid Man through it, broke it down, <laughs> and be like, "Hey, I know this was all going on, but you know, we got a little bit of a problem." Yep. He's got legions. He can <laughs> delegate. Other people can take care of this shit. Um, and then, and I don't know. In the end, like, how how helpful was it? Like, true, it did. It, it helped prep him a little bit, but like, I don't know. But not enough to like to it prep him. It helped prep him, but also like, they pretty much lost an entire legion after that because like, Magnus went to chaos and all this yeah. stuff, which is like <laughs> insane. But um, but I, I get. But at the same time, like, I really like the Thousand Sons. They're awesome yeah. because like Araman, he's probably one of my favorite like mm-hmm. non Primark characters. Okay. Because like there was a scene so later later on so, um, Gilman's coming back. He's making his way back to Terra after him and his uh, his elf lady, <laughs> um, or Eldar. Yep. <laughs> yep. So so we can copyright that. Um. So they're coming back, and the Eldar kind of the death god that's yeah. been born within this woman, and so she's his avatar of it. Uh, brings back the thousand suns that turned into dust. And they got their bodies back. Okay. And, like, Araman's just, like, so happy. Like, that's his main thing. Like, Araman doesn't want to, like, take over the world or anything. Like, he wants to, or, like, he's always trying to get into this, the secret library of the Harlequin. But he just wants to bring his brothers back. Right. And I find that, as I said before, those human pieces yeah. in the lore, that's what grabs me. Um, I mean, his brothers then got murdered afterwards. Yeah. But... <laughs> I, I found that, that seems like really the, that seems to like the end for most characters yeah, in this universe. Yeah, but I found that like really great. Um, no one dies a happy death in, in, in Warhammer. No, no, nobody dies old. Uh, but no, I, I really I, I like those kind of pieces. But overall, in a thousand suns, like their aesthetics, mm-hmm. they look great. They're cool. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. I I think they were they were a really cool uh, faction. Um, when I was I haven't read any of their books yet, uh, but I'll get to them. But there was one I was reading. Um, it's like. Battle for the Abyss, which is like one of, you know the big fight for the giant shit. It was a really good book, but at the end of the day, like it was meaningless because whatever they the Mechanicum builds this giant predator ship for the for the traitor legions and all this stuff, and it's destroying things and all this stuff. And at the end of the day, they kind of just the 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 loyal legions blow it up, and yeah. so it's like okay, all in one book. This was a waste, but alrighty. Yeah. Uh, this, but um, they had. Yeah, a, I sank my time into this. Exactly, but one of the first. I don't remember his name. One of the first thousand sons. Um, I met him on, in that book, and he was he was the shit. He was pretty cool. He like fought some wraith thing the entire time. I was like, nice. And even like we talked about the Raylanor book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean uh, Raylanor, uh, and when he wanted to detonate his bomb to take out Fulgrim, yeah, there was three thousand sun soldiers. I mean, uh, sorcerers there. Yeah. And they were like, hmm, Fulgrim's lost the freaking plot. <laughs> and they could have done something about Raylanor. They didn't. Yeah. They sided with it and they died with everybody. Like, Thousand Suns, not terrible. Yeah, no. Yeah. They, 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 they can do a pretty good job mm-hmm. uh, when they need to. Uh, yeah, no, overall, it's been cool. Okay, so let's get into yeah. what is. All right, so there are a few talking points for this episode as, uh, as I ramble on. But, uh, okay, so in terms of Warhammer. Okay, so what is your favorite uh, faction? So you play. So I think we talked about this. What's your favorite faction to play as, and what like either? Okay, what is your favorite faction to play as, and what is your favorite faction in terms of story? And if they're the same thing, that's cool. All right, so I play a few different factions. Uh, I'm painting an, another one soon. So that I got two in the line that I'm painting. I'm doing the orc commandos. Okay, I'm finally painting those. Orcs are orcs. They're awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, I love everything about it. Orcs are pretty fun. I've always had a, a pull since Admet came out for just liking the Adeptus Mechanicus. I like the aesthetics. Mm-hmm. I love 
like the Cerebus riders, they're riding mechanical horses in with like Lone Ranger style rifles. And I was like, yeah, that works in future warfare. Sure, I'm yeah, down. yeah. Um, How excessive. The, so. Yeah. We're not going to use real horses. We're going to use robot horses. And to their be. tanks don't have treads. They're quadrupeds. They're just walking around. Yeah. Of course. That's awesome. I, just, uh, I love all of this. Yeah. Um. So I really love their aesthetic. Uh. In terms of lore... I play the Harlequins too. I okay. don't get to. I don't play them all the time because uh, I find that a lot of people don't enjoy playing against Harlequins. Yeah, because uh, they're awesome. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> but I really like the lore of the Harlequins, like how they pull their members from. Like you have your craft worlds, they pull them from uh, the Drakari worlds as well nice. as the. Oh my goodness! Now I can't remember the basically the the eldar that just is like they're like i don't know how to describe them other than like i, I see them as the uh the mennonites or the <laughs> of like the eldar world they yeah, just went like, off to their maiden and worlds and just doing chill. their thing yeah. yeah they ride dinosaurs but they <laughs> they craft i mean they pull their recruits from all these and yeah. to serve the laughing god and i just love how each one of them is just a different embodiment of an act uh aspect in a play that's cool and so the way they fight is how that aspect would fight and they have troop leaders and um the death jester is a sick model nice and how he sets up his kills to be like the most ironic as possible like they had in one of the lore um books uh i think it was maybe a uh codex yeah it was a codex they're talking about how like a death jester was killing off everybody and then um the Hot, like the command was waiting for like a dropship to come down and take him away and so he's waiting waiting the command thought they were going to do it and then he shot the dropship motor so the dropship dropped on the command because, and then he was like ah. like the thing you thought was going to save you killed you and gotcha. like that's the, how gotcha, the death jester likes doing his shit all right that's fun I and like that. yeah i i like them um also he's one of the last the laughing god is like one of the last like harlequin gods and yeah. they guard the secret library of the Eldar. Okay, nice. Um, and so they're always butting heads with Araman of the Thousand Sons because Araman like wants into that library bad. <laughs> uh, That's but fun. they're cool and their models are great. Uh, I don't like painting checker patterns. Uh, that, that's <laughs> that has worst. to be so annoying to do. Yeah, <laughs> but, I have like one mini. Uh, though I was going to use in a DD campaign. Campaign that never, never. Uh, we did something else instead. <laughs> I remember we tried painting it, and mine was very basic. It had a white lab coat on and red, and like everything else was red. It was so hard. To paint. <laughs> it was so hard. Uh, yeah. I had to like do multiple coats over like the red. It's like I'm messing this up. I'm messing this up. <laughs> oh my goodness. But no, yeah, they're. They're great. I and I like the way they play. They they hit fast and they run away. They run. They got these like awesome tech like flip belts, which just allow them to like go nice. over anything. They don't fly. They just mm-hmm. if they jump, they're like, yeah, I jump for as much as I want. I always do that. Yeah. Uh, I personally believe in you know the uh, human superiority and my yeah. favorite characters, at least in terms of lore so far, um, are either it's either the salamanders legion because they oh, actually because yeah. they're actually like the good boys are like oh we don't want to murder and just run through all the citizens we're trying to protect yeah uh where a lot of the other legions will do that i uh, just so there's so many uh there's so many memes that i just love of like your world is like being torn apart by xenos and the astartes and another astartes legion just fell on you but it's a salamander so you're okay now yeah uh, you see a salamander you're like oh okay cool yeah and then there's uh, just because I read their book so far, I really think they're an interesting unit. Um, is or legion is the um, the Alpha Legion with their with the twin Primarchs and they're all named Afarius and all that stuff. They're that so was, cool. I actually well, I read I read I don't remember which book it was that I read, but it was just so interesting to like see all like see what they're doing, talking about and how their legions work and like oh it was very very cool. Doing a little too much work with the Xenos. That's all I'm saying. Like you know, death to the Xenos. Whatever. Yeah, I think. Uh... Alpharius uses a want to think is it a Necron tech spear? Uh, uh, that that might be that stuff, might yeah. be what it is. The they, they they Council of Aliens shows him the future shows them because Alpharius and Omicron are the twin primarchs of that legion, I yeah, believe. Yeah. Uh, or Omegon, Omegon, yeah, yeah, Omegon. There we go. yeah. yeah. Uh, and this alien council shows them the future, and I think they see. I haven't gotten to the next book that talks about them yet, but. Um, it pretty much, I think it shows them what happens to the emperor. And mm-hmm. so then that, that's going to, that's going to set something else off with the alpha legion, but they're pretty, they were pretty interesting to read about and all that stuff. So I think, I don't know. I, I just think the stories are the coolest thing. Uh, especially 
all the memes are like when you have to remind the alien that uh, it was man that was made in God's image, and that yeah. just the it's the alpha, it's, <laughs> it's just the Astartes just coming down on him. So, my question then, yeah, to kick back to you, do you think the Alpha Legion is loyal? That I don't know, because it seems like based on the based on the one book I've read, it looked like they were giving one of the, it was giving one of those whatever side wins in this situation, it's gonna suck no matter what. Mm-hmm. So like they, I don't I don't know because I don't think they I don't think that they're I don't think they're traitors. I don't think at least I don't think that they're you know on board with the heresy and um, the traitor legions. As yeah. far as I know, I'm not that once again I'm not that far. I haven't finished Horus Heresy yet, uh, but. I definitely, I don't think they're loyal to the emperor either because I think they're just like, maybe we'll just do something so none of it, that's so, you know, not everything falls apart. Um, on a lot of the videos, because like, it's just like, that's one of the things that I've, like, I've watched a lot. It, like, I see a lot in the videos. Um, at least I, there's, this, there's this one, I can't remember, it's on YouTube. It's only in an hour, but it covers the entire uh, Warhammer thing, like the overview of it. And, but like, the ending is like, you know, in mankind, we do all we can to rage against and fight back against these, like, terrible forces. But don't be mistaken, this is a losing battle. Like, we're just fighting to teach them that, like, anytime they think of a human, they just remember a scar uh, in their mental work there. Yeah. Uh, and that's what it seems like a lot, too, is that, like, it, 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 Agents of Chaos, it's a very, maybe, maybe the, uh, oh my god, why am I forgetting the robots? Uh, Men of Iron? No, 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 no. Necrons? The, uh, Necrons, yeah. Oh. Necrons probably have the best chance of killing the Chaos Gods and, you know, and and going beyond all that and stuff, but the Chaos Gods, the Chaos Gods, I know you said they were small fish in the overall story last night, but them alone, like, they're endless. Like, they just, it's what they are. They just keep coming back. Uh, they're uh, creations of, ma- of, uh, of the warp, sent- yeah. you have the warps of sentience, of sentient life in general, and so it just, you can't beat that, uh. Until you patch the webway, maybe you could fight against it, but you can't. But the webway, it's all broken and it's like it's just a mess. Or the Necron pylons, which just I don't know. What null, so the Necron pylons will just nullify the warp. Huh, that's cool. And uh, the Necron's big daddy king just came back from his sojourn nice. across like I, the universe. I, he left the galaxy of you know our war, and yeah. he's just come back, and. He helped out the. I want to say he helped out the Blood Angels because he donned the mask nice. of Sanguinius. No, yeah, I heard that yeah. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I'm like, mm, this is going to be cool. Be cool. I feel, Sanguinius. I feel like things are shaping up that we might get some changes. But the, however, the one problem that I love and hate about Warhammer is they do such a terrible job of moving the story forward. Yeah, I believe that. Uh, because when you move the story forward, you have to be creative again. Yeah. And then you might have people that their models don't work anymore because mm-hmm. you, God forbid, killed off a character. Oh, no. Uh, like, they killed off Creed, and now you have his daughter. Yeah. But, like, Creed and Tabletop used to be amazing for shenanigans because he worked together with Trazen. Yeah. The Infinite. And, like, um, so on the Tabletop, you could just, like, phase shift, like, a Bane Blade tank on the other enemy side of the field and just be like, <laughs> yep. Yep, I'm here now. That's what I do. Uh, um, yeah. But now Creed got captured and is in a space museum, so he's gone. <laughs> yeah. But, like, people are upset about that. Like, I mean, the, I understand, I totally understand that, being annoyed, especially with, like, in terms of models and all that stuff. But, I don't know, Magic the Gathering does that, too. It's like they, yeah. like, you know, uh, what, what's it called? They fall, uh, sets fall out of standard all the time. It's only, because there's only, it's only, like, you know, it's only a certain amount of time period that they exist there. And, you know, we just, people just move on. They deal with it. They'll play different, older, different versions. It's like... And that's and then they keep moving the story forward that way. I have no idea where the MTG lore is right now. I used to read it when I was I don't younger. Care anymore. But yeah, honestly, yeah. I, like after Dragons of Tarkir, I was like, okay, I'm good. Uh, I don't need to get into the whole Eldrazi thing coming back. And I then they then they went back to the, like, I know they this is totally off topic. I know they went back to a bunch of like worlds that I've already they like returned to Ravnica again. Like when I started playing, it was return to Ravnica. Now they yeah. return, return to Ravnica. So it's 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 whatever. Um, they get, but they yeah, weird on my I, my favorite worlds are playing is Innistrad. Innistrad is yeah, such it's a yeah, so nice. Yeah. Um, I'm still salty that Innistrad didn't get a, an entire D and D supplement book. Oh, that'd be cool. They, they gave it like an online like PDF file, but it was like a couple pages. Oh like, man, come on, come guys! On, this is the coolest world. What annoys me is like, yeah, that's the same company. You guys could just make this yeah. like, uh, yeah, no, I. 
Oh, I have a question. Sorry. Yeah, control. Sorry. Uh, okay, so I've heard so there's this there's this cool theory online that I've been um, hearing about because you know, War yeah Warhammer story it's moving very slowly, but people have theories about it, and mm-hmm. there's like stirrings maybe. Do you think that the Emperor? Uh, this is a two part question. Do you think the Emperor has a chance of coming back, or if he does? Do you think there's a chance that he might become a chaos god? Because that's a theory right now that with all the sacrifices he's getting and all the people praying to him, that this could be a huge psychic wave that turns him into another chaos god, essentially. Or, well, in so essence. So they, they talk about him being like the star child. So mm-hmm. there's like that star child that shows up every so often yes. the, and will guide ships or whatever. Um, and then like his the Sisters of Battle, they have their um, saints, which are basically just chaos demons. Yeah. But like are yeah demons. they're mad yeah. yeah i'm cool with them i like painting yeah. uh celestine she's great um however i don't i i think the the theory that i like the most is that and, and i'm gonna you're gonna stay with me on this one, all right all right is buckle that, up. so the black legion they kind of suck they're, yeah. they're not great i mean yeah good job taking down Cadia, mm. um, but you had to destroy a priceless uh, black fortress to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, nice. Cool. Nice. Cool. You're still not great. Nobody likes you. Your hair is terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't. Yeah. Like, I see... The, what are these doing with that ponytail? I know. <laughs> um, but I think that the, the grand plan is we're trying to bring the Black, black Legion to Terra. Okay have the emperor die okay and the reason why the emperor needs to die is the emperor is perpetual the yeah. emperor is being kept alive and so he can't regenerate as perpetual right okay and oh so i see what if you mean the emperor yeah. can finally die that will be an initial chaos throughout hmm. all the galaxy because the webway and everything will shut down however that will allow the emperor to be reborn interesting okay and hmm. that could be a good point so that's what i think would make the most sense to me okay um let the corpse and die, also probably. like that would kind of bring it together like okay this is the um big play by the alpha legion mm-hmm. they're assisting to try to make this happen Ooh, that'd that be kind of cool and then like the alpha legion and the harlequins are similar in that like the harlequins will show up and they're trying to plan the demise of slanesh oh, and God. so sometimes they'll Dude, help chaos stupid. yeah okay but then they'll help the um the imperium okay and to try to get these outcomes that they need to get to the future they want. Okay. And so they have this grand plan. And so I like the idea of these two factions having these grand plans okay. to try to set up what would ultimately save the universe. Um, I like that. Mm-hmm. I, and it makes sense to me. And that's what I like the most. It just makes sense. I was like, yeah, the Emperor's Perpetual. We have that set up in the lore. I don't think you just stop being a Perpetual. Yeah. Unless um, they work on it, which they're doing with I things. <laughs> I, there's part of the retcon thing, so they're saying like a lot of these stories are being written by record keepers. Okay. And at one point, I forgot when they said like record keepers in can put their own bias in there, and so they kind of gave themselves like a a way out of any time a story doesn't make sense and they want to retcon it. Mm. They're like, oh well, that was that record keeper's bias. Ah, uh, okay. So even with all this stuff, like, oh, there's always female custodians. They could say if this goes poorly, yeah, as it might be. Um, it seems like they're getting review bombed. Yeah, they could be. They could put out another book and be like, "Oh no, there was never any." Ah, um, I see. They gave themselves an out. Um, well, that's good, I guess. I'm just, I don't. My like, and I think this goes back. This goes back to the issue of like moving the story forward. It's like you could have written, you could have written a female Astartes and made them or do all done all this stuff, but instead, or like a Custodes or whatever. But instead, you decided just to like change the story overall it just feels a little insulting it's like guys like what are you doing just like make new content move the story forward and also not for nothing there's really cool female characters already amazing female yeah character. like the See, navigator on yeah. the oh my goodness angrons uh oh, the world eaters the world, oh oh their yeah. navigator she's awesome amazing yeah she's awesome there's a Imperial Guard characters, yeah. Creed's daughter is awesome. Yeah, I read in uh, the Horus Heresy, uh, the Flight of the Eisenstein, which is a great book. That's what um, I thought they were going to do for Amazon. That would make sense. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Cavill as Eisenstein. Oh, that'd be or so. Eisen- How- Eisenhower. Eisenhower. Oh God! Now I'm done. As so, the Eisenstein's a ship. And oh, not then, Eisenstein. Who is the? I know you're talking the about. Inquisitor. I know Eisen- you're talking about. I can't remember. I don't know. Anyways, uh, but. 
like even like one they had they have like one of the first saints in that book because mm-hmm. she was where she could channel the Emperor's power and all that stuff. And then they had the captain on that ship ruled. Uh, then a few other characters that were really really good. And I'm just like, why are you just using? And like even the sisters of silence and all this stuff, they're crazy cool. It's like use these characters and like. And another thing I don't really fully understand is like. So obviously, you know, obviously people, everyone has an agenda and all this stuff and woke or not, whatever. The, the, the adding of the female stuff is woke. But, and people like, I don't know why you want representation in the Astartes or in Warhammer in general, because they're genocidal maniacs. Yeah. Like the, all the legions are like, even at the end of the day, that's what they do. They kill aliens, take over planets. And that's it. Like, the whole Imperium of mankind is all kind of like just pointed at death. And like, they have virus bombs that destroy entire planets brutally. Yeah. And I'm just like, why do you guys want to be part of it? Yeah. They got the corpse emperor. Yeah. Like, it's insane. Like the world is so messed up. Being in Astartes is messed up. Like obviously human superiority. But like it seems like being part of like the uh, the Eldar is probably a probably safer solution in some ways. Like to keep your humanity, well your I guess humanity alive. Like I mean, even like the Sisters of Battle, or not <laughs> Sisters of Battle, the Deputist Sorotas. Yeah. Now. But I don't know why we're just forgetting them. Like they're awesome. I know they have, they have like this all black ship. That I think right. Oh. That's super cool. Oh. They're the one. Wait, let me double check. They're the ones that like go around hunting psychers, right? Like, they don't show up in the warp or something like that. Sisters of Silence. Sisters of Silence? Okay. So, there's this, those are the Sisters of Silence. They're awesome. Yeah. Um, there was actually a really awesome, sh- like, short story in one of the White Dwarves about the Sisters of Silence. Yeah. Like, just, like, kicking down the door of a psych, like, getting a rogue psyker. Mm-hmm. And it was illustrating the fear the psyker had of them just systematically taking out people. Nice. And I was like, oh, Sisters so And like, after that story... I started looking up prices for Sisters of Silence boxes because, <laughs> like, I need these. Uh, but, no, the Adeptus Sororitas are amazing because, unlike the Space Marines, they have such a versatility of that order. Yeah. And so, like, within that order, you have the Sisters of Battle, who are awesome. They have power armor. They get shit done. Mm-hmm. Then you also have um, the, like, Sister Novitiates, who are, like, kind of ones training up to be in there. But they also, they got healers, they got diplomats, they have teachers, they have tutors, they have, they encompass so many things and they can do so much more than just like the Adeptus, um, Astodi, I mean the Adeptus or I guess. Custodes? Yeah. Not the Custodes, uh, yeah, the Custodes, but also the Astartes. Yeah. Um, the Astartes at best, you get some of the blood angels make <laughs> some true. pottery. Yeah, true. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's very true. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's it's very it's very interesting. Oh, the blood angels, the poor blood angels. Sanguini, I really, I've I've only met Sanguini a few times, but like this, the reading about like reading about him, seeing videos on him, it's like, oh man, you really were just the best boy, weren't you? Like Ramute Gilliman, great to have him back around. He is a golden retriever boy. He is solid. Uh, definitely, definitely can carry on the emperor's will and all that stuff. But like, yeah, Sanguini, so was just he's literally an angel. So it's like, oh, the only problem he had was he was kind of a vampire. But other than that. Who is it? Exactly. Who doesn't do weird stuff in there? Do weird shit. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I don't he's know. Quirky. That's he's awesome. quirky. He's, he's quirky. If I want to date with him, I'll be like, he's quirky. Yeah. How do you think this? <laughs> I, uh, uh, we're almost done here because we this is actually going on longer than I thought it was gonna be. Nice. Uh, um, how? Uh, what do you think about? What, like, do you have any hope for the show that's coming out with Henry Cavill in it? None whatsoever. Yeah. I like. I know Henry Cavill's in it, and I th- and I know he's big on like. He's a super nerd, so he's really big on like protecting the story. That's why he left The Witcher and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, I just don't know. I don't know. I just I can't. Because once again, the story of Warhammer is just all about killing and death and being horrible. So it's like I don't know how you're gonna. It's gonna be very interesting to see if they like try to make it out to be like, oh, they're not like super bad. It's like you're kind of not doing the story then. The only way I could see the Warhammer story actually being good mm-hmm. is not on Amazon. Sure. Not on Netflix, HBO. Yeah, I if like it, yeah. Max picked it up. Yeah, our man. Yeah. No, but if HBO Max picked up the Warhammer story, mm-hmm. I think they would actually do a really good job because they they can actually handle dramas. Like even like some of their new ones. I just finished with. Uh, I've been watching Succession. Okay. 
Oh yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's check that out. Yeah. But like, there's a lot of stories. If they, there are some stories in there that are like high drama in Warhammer that we could do, like an Inquisitor based yeah. story where he's just trying to figure out what's going down on the planet and leading up to a final showdown with like a psyker or a gene stealer call or something like that. That'd be cool, yeah. That would be awesome with it. Just this, yeah. That just makes sense to me, and it would be lower budget. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's a really good point. Yeah. And who doesn't like a mystery? Like, <laughs> oh, I love, I love who done it too. Like twenty four, twenty four, but as a Warhammer series, that would be great. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah, I could see that. That'd be really fun. Yeah. But yeah, all right. This has been a solid episode, actually. Okay. Yeah. All right. We will be back the rest of the week with Cody, and we'll catch you guys then. Thank you, Normal Nerd Nation, for listening and maybe even watching another podcast episode. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, and Instagram. Davis is always posting hilarious memes on there. Also, like and subscribe while you're at it. And leave a rating if you have some time. It helps people find the show.